the subject. We couldn't do it without fundraising, of course. Now, we, as many people will know, have a very broad portfolio of fundraising activities, but I'm not going to talk about legacies or direct giving or, or, or shops or Race for Life, because you know all about that stuff. Um, we do have a very active and important innovation program in cancer research in our fundraising activities, and we believe passionately that, that we have to keep innovating to, to drive fundraising forward. And we have to think differently uh, about fundraising. And so, uh, just to give a couple of examples of, of some of the things that we've been doing, I, I guess you will have heard about Genes in Space last night, given that it won an award, I believe. Um, but, but this was an example of, of something where we wanted to, to bring um, both mobile technology and gaming technology to bear on, on, on some of the challenges we face. And, and what we developed was a, a citizen science program where people could take part in an activity to analyse genome data from cancer patients in a normalised way, but by doing so, greatly speeding up our, our analysis of that data. And so within the first month, one and a half million people helped us to classify genome data, which would have taken our scientists several years to do. And so, now this wasn't about direct cash coming into the organisation, but what it was, was about engaging the broad public to help us with our work, if you like, that meant we don't need to spend as much cash on some of that, on some of that activity. So a fantastic, a fantastic example of, of something that's really worked for us. Another example is, is the Dryathlon programme, a simple, simple uh, idea, giving up alcohol for the month of January, uh, been fantastically successful for us. Um, in the first year, 35,000 people took part and raised over £4 million for us. And this, me, is, this is me being a very proud fundraiser. Um, many of you will be aware of the phenomenon that was the no makeup selfie at the end of March. It wasn't something we started at Cancer Research UK, but it was something that people within the fundraising team very quickly saw an opportunity around and invited people, if they wanted to, to make a donation uh, as, part of this, as part of this phenomenon. And a very fast and creative response meant that we were able to, to generate something of the order of £8 million in six days. And what was so brilliant about that wasn't just the amount of money that was raised, wasn't just this phenomenon about which we didn't create. But that very same week, we had one of our funding committees deciding which clinical trials to fund. And as often is the case with our, with our funding committees, we can't do all of the stuff we want, to, we want to do. And in this particular week, there were 10 trials we wanted to fund that we didn't have the money for. But thanks to this, thanks to this, um, this phenomenon, the funding committee having taken place on a Tuesday, uh, by, by Saturday we knew that £8 million had come in. And that day we were able to say, we're going to fund all 10 trials. And they're across a whole range of different types of cancer, from breast cancer to very, very rare cancers. So it was a fantastic phenomenon for us, and one that we're really, really pleased about. And, of course, we'll continue to look for new and different ways in which to interact with our supporters over the coming years. Because it's by doing that that we will do this, which is to achieve our ambition. So, when we launched our new strategy a couple of months ago, we said, yes, we've come a long way. We've, come, we've gone from less than one in four people surviving cancer to now two in four people surviving cancer. But that can't possibly be enough. And that progress that we've made is not nearly fast enough. Because, as I've already told you, 160,000 people lose their lives to cancer every year in the UK. So until we've stopped every one of those losing their lives, our work isn't done. And so we set out an ambition um, uh, a couple of months ago that we want to double the speed of progress. So we've gone from one in four to two in four over a 40 year period. We want to go from two in four to three in four over a 20 year period. It's not going to be easy, but we have lots of reasons to believe that actually we, we have a good chance of getting there. We're making progress at a rate that's faster than we ever have before. And we really do have opportunities now. To, to really shift the dial on, on, on cancer outcomes. And the only thing that limits us as an organisation is the extent of our ambition. The only thing that stops us reaching 
for those higher targets is what we ourselves believe we can do. And so that's why we have set this really big ambition and why it's an ambition not just about what our scientists do but about what our fundraisers need to do because we can't obviously achieve this without a huge um, uh, continued and indeed growing level of fundraising. Um, but we do have this opportunity to make a difference. We do have this opportunity through research to really, as I say, shift the dial. And we genuinely are in a period of which there has been no light in history in terms of the progress we can make in cancer. And, you know, for me, when I reflect on this, when I reflect on this picture that you see here in, in this slide, it means that in my lifetime, across every type of cancer, we will have gone from less than one in four people surviving to three in four people surviving. And, that, and of course our work is not done at that point, but what a transformation that will be in our lifetimes. And, and, and indeed that's the kind of message that I give to our fundraisers when I talk to them. That actually we're all part of making this transformation happen. And what a legacy that is that we can leave to the world. What a legacy, what a statement that is, that each one of us, however long we're at Cancer Research UK, can say, I was part of the journey that took us from fewer than a quarter of people surviving to more than three quarters of people surviving. And it is a fantastic level of inspiration for people. So when I go to the fundraising teams, when I go to Richard and I say, we need more than that. We need a lot more than that. And I do that every year. And I do that with our fundraisers and I do it with our volunteers. But when I say that to them, I'm able also to say them to them, but look at the difference you're making by doing so. And we really are making a difference, and it's a fantastic story to be able to tell. And so, um, that's really the story of Cancer Research UK, that's the story of why fundraising is so important to me, to what we do, to our ability to really transform this outlook for patients, not just in the UK, but right across the world. Because we really do have a big, big job to do, as I set out right at the beginning. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Harpal. Um, certainly listening to you makes me very proud to be a fundraiser, but also very proud to be a donor of CRUK. So. Uh, I, I'm sure you feel the same way. There's two very quick things for me um, that I wanted to say. Harpal spoke about 160,000 people every year in this country dying. Uh, in the last year, one of those people has been one of our own. Um, many of you will have known Jane Barsley. Jane Barsley was a corporate and major donor fundraiser at Battersea Dogs and Cats Home. Last year, with her colleague Beth, she won this, uh, this event we do called Pitch Perfect. Uh, and if you saw her, you would not have seen anybody more full of life uh, and full of fundraising brilliance than Jane. But cancer doesn't care about that. But we at the IOF do. So usually we don't repeat our pre-party slot, but this year for Jane, we are repeating that. Um, and there will be four of the most brilliant charities pitching each other's cause. One of them is CRUK. One of them is Macmillan, so very poignant for the reason why Jane passed away, and Demelza, which is a hospice with diabetes. Um, and they are all doing it, not in, in a sombre mood, but in a real celebratory mood, because it, that was, was what Jane was about, and that's why we're doing it. But we're also doing it to win a thousand pounds for the winning cause, and quite the most classic trophy you'll ever get. And while Harpal was there on his last slide, I was actually thinking whether or not in 20 years I would put money on another English person holding the wheel one of this, or on Harpal hitting his 75%. And I think we all know where, where we would put our money. Uh, it's 6 p.m. tonight in the King Suite. We'll, we'll put a side of it uh, away. Um, but if you can come, if you're still here for the evening, please do come along. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and you will get to see some brilliant corporate fundraisers pinching each other's causes, uh, so that is great. To finish with, I'm going to ask for a show of hands. I don't know if lights can, can put it onto the audience, is that possible? I would like everybody to put their hand up if they are a member of the IOF. If you're proud to be a fundraiser. Okay, I was going to do it the other way around to get people to put their hands up. If it were. But 
but if you're not, if you, yes, I'm not if you are not a member, think about how proud you are. Think when you listen to Harpel talking about the difference that every single donor, every single fundraiser makes, and I'm sure every one of your causes is as important and as valuable. We are stronger together. All of the things that Mark and Peter have talked about because we have a strong membership. And we have to all join. I'm not going to make this a soft ask. We have to all join the Institute. This is what our profession is all about, is us coming together, standing together, and saying this is why we are here. We are proud of what we do for a living, and we are proud of the difference that we make. So if you could go down to the expo, talk to the guys there about the benefits of membership. And the first, I'm going to repeat what I did last year, the first first year fundraiser that goes down and says, I'm a first year fundraiser, I will pay for their membership. Richard, you going to match it? Yep, Richard, the first two first year fundraisers that go down and say, I would like to join. We did it last year and those guys have had so much benefit from it. But everybody else, please go down. This is our shop window as an institute, but it's the most important thing that you can come out of here is that we are part of something wonderful. We're not individuals and sometimes we can feel lonely in our jobs, but we are part of something wonderful if we all join. So please, 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 I know it's a bit of money, but you will get more out of it in your career by being a member. Thank you very much.